Hello, Helen Callanan here from Preparing the Way. Thanks for dropping by. I wanted to chat today about a question I get asked quite a bit, and that is why I call myself an end of life doula rather than a death doula, and why we say we deliver here at Preparing the Way end of life doula training rather than death doula training. And there's a few things I want to share about that. Um, firstly, as an end-of-life doula, our training and our work is, is really around a focus on life, really assisting people have the highest quality of life, about living right up to that last breath. You know, it's about the people we work with and having choice and control and really being honoured with capacity all the way along in their life, right up to that last breath and then beyond. You know, we work alongside a great company called um, Natural Grace Holistic Funeral Care. And Libby Maloney, um, who's the principal there, created a model um, of 10 stages of life. And we've adopted that here at Preparing the Way. And it's all about talking about these 10 stages that, that we go through um, if, you know, we are just living our lives, you know, going along. So where we can be just going along living our lives, as I said, and um, maybe we're doing some planning, maybe we're doing advanced care directives, maybe we have elderly parents and we're wanting to help get some plans in place and know what it is they want. Or maybe we want to put plans in place because we've got children and young family. So whatever it is, we're well, but we're living our life. And so an end-of-life doula, as an end-of-life doula, I work with people in that stage. And then maybe there's a progression, maybe then a person is advancing in age or maybe there's a life-limiting diagnosis enters the picture. Then as an end-of-life doula, again, I work with people in that stage. So it's about helping people, like what are their options? Uh, maybe I'm accompanying people to medical appointments and things like that, helping them navigate the medical and healthcare system. There's a lot out there. Helping people understand that they have choices that they really can, you know, find out what is available to them and make choices. Then perhaps they may be moving through the stages, having treatment and living with their illness or their ageing. And still we can be there helping them maybe get resources or know other information about what's available to them. So then maybe there's a progression and treatment stops and maybe they enter palliative care. Again, as end-of-life doulas, we can work alongside the medical and nursing and conventional care people, providers and allied health. We can work alongside them to bridge the gaps in service there. You know, there's so much stress and stretch on our healthcare system at the moment and on conventional care. End-of-life doulas are right in there being able to support and bridge those gaps. Then maybe a person moves into that final stage of, of life, which is called active dying. And then maybe the, then the death will occur. Then um, we have after death care. So maybe person want to take their person home and doula can help with that. You know, providing that end of, uh, sorry, that after death home-based uh, end of life care. And then maybe we're helping them plan a funeral or memorial care. Then we're going to help return the body to the elements in whatever form the family or the person has indicated they would like. But then we're working with the person and the family left behind going, okay, how, what is your new normal? How can we support you in your grief? And as you know, with grief and, and bereavement support, as we navigate that loss and the, this new normal. So as you can see, there's, there's all of these different stages and an end-of-life doula is about authentic continuity of care because think about it, there are very few roles, in fact, if any, that can actually accompany a person at every stage of that journey all the way through. Even some of our um, end-of-life doulas also are celebrants and they're actually doing the funeral celebrant or the memorial celebrant role as well. So there's this beautiful continuity that actually happens. And so, you know, if you think about it, death is one exhalation, one out breath at the end of a life. And then after that, there is a whole lot more that happens. You know, we talked about those 10 stages. So death happens around the middle somewhere. So again, we see end of life being about life 
rather than this moment of death. The other thing that happens too is, you know, I've seen over the years being with people and their, you know, family and those people close to them as they're approaching this end of life. It's such a privilege. And, you know, whatever our beliefs and traditions or faiths are, they're to be honoured. And some people have a belief that nothing happens. That's to be honoured. Some people have a belief that after death, there's a whole other thing that happens. Whatever it is, as an end-of-life doula, it's my role not to, if you like, uh, wax rhetoric about my beliefs, right, because they're beliefs, but it's about what's important to the person and supporting them. So, you know, I, how I think of this circle of life um, is as a great teacher of mine said once, and I paraphrase, who we really are has never been born and can never die. Who we really are has never been born and can never die. Like, what does that, what's that really saying? To me, what that saying is, is it's this body that gets born. It's this body that will return to the elements. But the spark of life, the thing that brings this body animate, that actually gives us like this spark of life force, whatever it is that you want to call it, you know, it, there's something else happening as well. So to me, it's again, it's helping ex people explore what is real and meaningful to them. And here's the other part to this is almost every single person that I've worked with over the last 30 plus years who are approaching and meeting the end of their life come to it with some level of trepidation, maybe concern or real fear of this unknown and momentous event that is coming to them. So often they are looking for, for reassurance, for hope, for encouragement. You know, so I think if you think about it, I know for me as a human being, when I'm scared of something, when something is a concern to me, or I'm scared, of, I tend to shy back or pull back from it. Right, I try sometimes to avoid it. And I think that's common as human beings. It's one of our, our parts of our machinery as a human being is that we will often pull back from what frightens us. Well, here at Preparing the Way, what we're really doing is why we want to talk about this circle of life, the circle of life, not focusing on death, is because it, it's about how do we gentle how do we bring a gentling to this fear and concern? How do we create a safe environment where people are willing to come and look, just gently, safely approach this thing called end of life? How are they, um, how can we encourage them to do that if we're sticking death doula and death and everything? Look, I've done this in the past, but I've changed how I approach it now. You know, to me, I want to have people feel safe and encouraged to come forward and actually be able to embrace this conversation, to talk to their families, to explore the options. There's so much available now. It's changing so much. And so here preparing the way, we're really clear about that end of life doula because our focus is on life and also on the living because that's where the truth really is, that perhaps death is one breath, one moment, not this great big thing because it sits in this full circle of life. So I hope that gives you some insight into why we are here at Preparing the Way talk about ourselves as end-of-life doulas and we deliver end-of-life training and we focus here at Preparing the Way on the circle of life and its beauty and all of its stages. And, you know, I hope that that gives you something to think about. And I encourage you before I um, sign off, I encourage you to take the time to think about this, to talk to your people about this, to make plans, to write them down, to have conversations, because I promise you doing this now will and does make a difference to the people who are, you know, often dealing in their grief, 
to know what their person wanted, to be able to give that final gift is a real blessing to be able to do. Thank you. Take good care of you.